the aim of this presentation is to highlight the importance of how active and independent assessment of CT MRI scans by an ophthalmologist can lead to an optical diagnostic aid instead of solely rely, relying upon reports of a radiologist. So we are always taught read the scan plates, not the reports first. So why should an ophthalmologist learn to interpret CT scan when already we have the radiologist report? So we all know that orbital disease accounts for a small, very small part of the radiologist every CT scan load. And obviously they have less opportunity to gain expertise in this area. While we have a better anatomical and functional knowledge of orbital structures and also we are well equipped with patient's clinical profile. So we have always an advantage over them. So the clinical information which is supplied by a, a referring ophthalmologist is essential for a radiologist to select an appropriate technique for imaging and also for deriving the most specific conclusion. If we fail to supply the uh, patient's clinical data or the need for special scans, it will obviously lead to falsely negative CT scans. We don't need to understand the excessive technical and jargons of the CT MRI machines. We only need to know, uh, read the reports. So the slice thickness, the usual one we ask for is 2 mm cuts. Also the mod uh, modifications of CT procedures like in uh, to do Halsalva maneuver in suspected orbital venous varix and also the Samuel CT brain scan uh, which is needed in cases of suspected neurocystisarcosis with orbital involvement and like in other cases bilateral heritable retinoblastomas. So mostly we are supplied with hard copies but if needed we can always fo ask for a link of scan online nowadays. So a gentle reminder for those who, uh, for young ophthalmologists is for how to read a scan, note down the findings in detail and then read the reports, compare both the reports, find out the discrepancies and then reach out to certain diagnosis. Uh, we don't have in our campus the MRI scan, so mostly my talks are based upon the CT scan, our mistakes and the lessons learned. So the case scenario one, a female child, two and a half year old, C came to us with certain protrusion of, le certain protrusion of left eye for last three days. Uh, these are the uh, ocular examination findings. She had dystopia in left eye. The movements in certain gauges were uh, obviously restricted. So the primary physician had already asked for the CT scan of the orbit without brain scan and without contrast. So this was the finding which we got on different sections. And the radiologist said that uh, what he wrote was a well-defined isodense intraconal lesion um, involving uh, the entire left medial lactis muscles. And his view was that it can be a lesion of inflammatory and infective etiology. Though we didn't get a classical scolex picture what we see, uh, see in um, myocystis sarcosis. So on a presumptive basis, we started with uh, tablet albendazole um, and got a steroid therapy, but also asked for the MRI scan from somewhere else. After two weeks, the patient turned with the MRI report and the patient was not responding to the treatment. This time, uh, on MRI scan, what we got to see that this same lesion is an ill-defined intraconal heterogeneous enhancing lesion, predominantly solid with few cystic areas in the medial aspect of the left orbit. And uh, the radiologist suspected diagnosis was lymph lymphoma or rhabdomyosarcoma. Um, I continued, um, our view was that it can be a case of lymphangioma. But since uh, he raised the dot of rhabdosarcoma, so obviously I thought that I should always take a second opinion so as not to meddle with uh, patient's life. So in another center, the plain orbital USD was done and they suggested us since we have already started with almendazole therapy, so continue with it. After third week, the uh, child baby started responding with treatment or without treatment, um, still uh, controversial. After six months, the patient was all right. After revisiting those MRI scan and CT scan, what we got to know that probably it was a case of lymphangioma, which is all well known that it can regress on its own. So lesson learned is uh, for us, learn to rely upon your diagnosis, read the scan plates yourself. Obviously, you can always take a second opinion. Case scenario two. Another 34-year-old male patient with road traffic accident came, came to us on the second day with ecchymosis in left eye and pseudo, mild pseudo in ophthalmos. The rest of the examinations were like this. Uh, he had no, his ocular movements were full and free. Apart from mild in ophthalmos, no other um, complaints he had. This uh, serial sequencing of uh, sections of CT scan, you can see there was obviously the floor fracture which was communicated and. Um, the radiologist also said that there is a mild impingement of inferior rectus muscles. 
but on examination we had ocular movement full and free just to uh, confirm we took the patient and uh, did the force reduction test which was free so uh, since the vision was six by six apart from myelin ophthalmos there was no complaint so we took the decision that we'll go ahead uh, without uh, doing any surgery so observation was our approach he, the patient is still under follow-up and he's doing well and um, that's all so we all know that in cases of fracture of the floor of the orbit we should ask for clearly write it down that a reformated sagittal view along the axis of the inferior rectus muscle is a must uh, for evaluation also for management and diagnosis our mistake was that we just wrote the axial scans and the uh, uh, coronal not the reformatal sagittal view which we didn't get so uh, the lesson learned is that if we don't clearly communicate what six imaging planes of the scan is necessary to a radiologist it can lead to difficulty in diagnosis and also the management case scenario three a four-year-old child came to us with progressive swelling of the right upper eyelid superior nasally for last six months on examination we could see that it was a cystic lesion but we couldn't see the posterior margin obviously before taking it to or we asked for a ct scan uh, so on CT scan, the Hounsfield number for this uh, cystic lesion is around 10. The radiologist said that it's a cystic lesion probably of dermoid, probably a dermoid. To us, it looked like a plain cystic conjunctival cyst. We operated upon it. Histopathologically, it was confirmed that is a simple conjunctival inclusion cyst. So coming to literature review, we know that uh, dermoid cyst will have fat contents. Fat uh, has got minus 100 Hounsfield. So it will be hypodense. Maybe because of other components, it will be a little um, the picture like this. So obviously, it was not matching with, uh, with our lesion. OK, so the lesson learned is being an ophthalmologist, we are better equipped with the knowledge of orbital and ocular lesion. So learn to question and discuss controversial inputs by radiologist. Case number four. 13 year old female who came to us with RCS with ACS but she, ha she used to uh, evert her lower eyelid frequently in front of the mirror and there was a soft localized yellowish white soft mass in the left temporal fornix and she was quite bothered about it that uh, remove this one so we uh, to find out the extent orbital involvement is there or not we uh, sent it for CT scan the radiologist said that is all normal problem was that we again went back uh, discussed with him and then he confirmed that there is a hypodense lesion very small lesion the problem was that from our point that we advised axial and coronal scans 2 mm as usual we also mentioned lipoma lipodermoid left eye but forgot to forgot to mention the zone that it was an anterior lateral part of the orbit probably it was a very small one so while reporting we just missed it so post obviously we did uh, we operated and uh, histopathologically it was confirmed so lesson learned is while advising a scan for orbital lesions be thorough with the scan type thickness location provisional diagnosis and do discuss it with the radiologist take home messages re uh, read your scan reports yourselves and also take their uh, positive inputs thank you well brought out point uh, just what we talked about in the previous talk uh, MRI we said the same thing and in Hyderabad I have uh, noticed that there are two or three pockets of radiologists who are very attuned to orbital pathology where frequent referrals happen from the major institutes where oculoplasty is practiced but the rest of them are still naive to the orbital uh, lesions of course COVID has made them very uh, good about reading orbital involvement from sinuses and other things, but the other orbital agents sometimes may miss their eye. And like you said, yes, we do need to correlate clinically, read it yourself first, and then reconfirm it. Final, of course, the final diagnosis is always the pathologist. 